The racist history of Planned Parenthood, a father's heart rents as he gives a warning about his daughter being sex trafficked. But a positive note, women are making a major contribution to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, the STEM fields, and a movement that is transformational and change is coming right now on VFN TV. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. We're talking about, you know, debunking Planned Parenthood's yes. original roots. As a matter of fact, Clonard Childress, he speaks about the, the, the racist roots and the foundational history, the racist history of Planned Parenthood. As a matter of fact, take a look. This is the real deal about Planned Parenthood. Well, Planned Parenthood has had a startling agenda from its inception, started by a woman whose goal in part was controlling the black population through abortion and sterilization. Margaret Sanger with the goal of controlling the black population and other groups that she thought of the same. Here's a look back at what at abortion and the providers, what they've done to minorities. Abortion is black genocide. What happens to a mind of a person and the moral fabric of a nation that can accept the aborting of a child? without a pang of conscience. In many black communities, for every child actually born, three others are aborted, more than double the rate among whites. Dr. Clinner Childress, founder of blackgenocide.org, says the consequences of those figures will eventually end up destroying a whole race of Americans. African Americans here in this country are the only ethnic group in any place on the globe that's not replacing themselves. This is, this is genocide. Some say abortion is the number one killer in the black community, leading more and more African-American churches to speak out and take a stand for life. Bishop Daniel Robertson of Richmond's Mount Gilead Baptist Church says black pastors have a responsibility to their communities to do more. We really need to just, you know, make a statement to the community that we, uh, we believe the Bible, uh, thou should not kill. But Robertson's church does more than just preach against abortion. For one, they encourage their members to consider adopting these unplanned children. We go to the abortion clinics and, and ask people. Uh, there are other alternatives. We try to educate people, let them know you don't have to do this. And so we do have that ongoing ministry. And then because our doors are open and we preach the message of Jesus Christ, we do try to give people hope. In his book, No Shepherds Cry, Childress says the black church can no longer be silent on the issue. If there's a devouring force that is decimating my community, as a shepherd, I must respond with the truth and deliver the lamb with its young, with its young from the wolf and the devourer. And the devourer is the abortion industry. Dr. Childress points out this should come as no surprise, considering that black Americans were long ago targets of the abortion industry. In the early 20th century, Margaret Sanger founded Planned Parenthood, an organization that later became the nation's largest abortion provider. Sanger encouraged abortion and sterilization to limit the size of black families. Childress says she also used the unaware black minister to further her agenda. Margaret Sanger, a devout racist, a, uh, a eugenics and the author of the Negro Project knew that the colored minister was going to be pivotal in getting her program across. Because of that, both Robertson and Childress believe black clergy must take the lead in fighting against abortion. The colored minister, the Negro minister, the African American minister is pivotal right now in addressing the abortion issue because we have been silent due to political ties and due to some misinformation. But Robertson says the issue isn't just with the black church, but with the faith community as a whole. There are a lot of pastors, whether they're black or white, they're just comfortable. They don't want to stir up anything. You can't just stay behind the stained glass windows of your sanctuary, but you really do have to reach out into the community and make a difference. This father, like any other father, you know, it's amazing how, how addicted 
this young generation is to technology in regards to this, like, I gotta have it, I gotta be involved. So over one billion folks, I guess, now are on Facebook, and they're just sharing everything. Mm -hmm. you know, this is my donut I had, this is my coffee, I'm leaving this room this now, I'm going to, I mean, they share everything. Nice well, his daughter got onto social media, and uh, she's, you know, doing it on her phone, and he's thinking, he's looking over what's happening, but all along, she was hooking up with someone in regards to a friend in another city that ended up for her being taken by a predator and put into sex trafficking. Think about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you, know, you got all these people that are online, you don't know who they are, and people tell you, they have this, like this whole fake thing, everybody has this perfect life, they say, that are trying to present this, like, you know, I just left my perfect house, I'm driving my perfect car, and this is my perfect day, and you know, all those kind of things, and it's not real. The, you know, the people, that's why people are craving, craving authenticity, mm -hmm. because everything is so, you know, photoshopped, if you would. <laughs> Edited. Edited. So you got this this young girl, she's 17, you think she's just playing on Facebook or social media, her father thinks, but next thing you know, he's getting a phone call from authorities in Nevada saying your daughter is involved in sex trafficking. Take a look. His 17-year-old daughter was targeted for human trafficking by two different groups seven months ago. He posted a video rant that went viral. So far, it has been viewed over 19 million times. Now, we do not recommend recording videos while driving in a vehicle. Please do not try this at home. Despite that, you must hear what he has to say. I have a child that's 17 years old, and she's always on the internet, like a lot of your children. I'm pretty strict father, so I'm pretty involved in what she's doing. A couple days ago, she asked me um, if she could go with a, a friend of hers that I've met the family, the mom and everyone, and if she could go to Reno. So I let her. Yesterday I get a call from the sheriff and they have my child in San Jose. And she had been a victim of a sting. It was a nationwide investigation company that was investigating minors being sold online for sex. They went online and they found my daughter's profile that these older people had made for her and they set up a date for her, with her. By the grace of God, it was this man and not a real man that set up a date with my 17-year-old child. She's not innocent, but she was definitely manipulated. The point is, like, this could happen to anybody's child. You, you think that your kid's on the phone, you're on the, on, the, on the internet or whatever, and you think you know what they're doing? I advise you to... This world don't care about our children, man. We got... This world does not care about our children, man. And he's just realized, you know, we got to just, you know, invent. The thing about it is, you got this whole thing competing against parenting yeah. your kids, where it's out there creating, creating this false persona and all this, you know, gold at the end of the rainbow, which is not really. If it's too good to be true, it's too, tr too true. And you have no idea who you're really talking to because you're just clicking on logarithms, which are created to yeah. have a word hyperlink that says like or share, but that's nothing but just tracking uh, data and, and somebody's programming there. But the whole thing is you end up at a real place, and she ended up in a real place where she was being sold, but by God's grace, it was the actual sting yeah. that was going on, and so she didn't get uh, victimized and, that, that. and that's the naivety of youth, is that you know, you're 14, 15, 16 years old, it doesn't even dawn on you to recognize or realize the fact that just because somebody's profile says that, or just, that, just because that's their profile image, doesn't mean that's the, the person that you're talking to on the other end. It's like you have no idea right. what is really happening or who you're really communicating with. I had this commercial years ago where I had this, I think the young lady or young man that was talking on the internet and then they backed the camera up and they showed the other person they were talking to over there and it was a, guy, a little a young man that's typing on the internet. The other side was like a 500 pound man but he thought he's talking to a girl. I mean you just don't even know who you're talking yeah. to. And anybody who's going to go into a system like that's a predator, mm -hmm. you know, people that are, you know, being predators for folks. But it's, you know, something you have to encourage your, your, your people, not just young ones either, because yeah. I think one of the greatest issues right now with the marriage is the fact that, the, that that's taking place where people are just going off into the virtual zone. But the fact that, uh, that it's not real, yeah. you know, it's not all these things that, 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 that uh, tempt you or tempt your kids, you got to tell them over and over, it's just not real. It's just not real, and they, they are gonna be pulled by it, but you gotta say, you know, you got to understand it's not real. 
And of course, when they start life, they realize, I don't know what I was thinking. That was good what I had. I can't believe I always envied everything else and I wanted to be everybody else and I wanted to be somewhere. And they find out they were somebody mm -hmm. and they were in a good place. And I think that's so, so very important. I'm telling you, these are exciting days. These are very exciting these days. These are very exciting days. Um, President Donald Trump is focusing on so many different areas and just taking the bull by the way. Obviously, he's learned how to do it over the years because he's managing you know, a multi-billion dollar uh, industry and company across the world, and and he's able to handle different. That's a, obviously an anointing, a mm -hmm. gift to be able to do something like that. And some people can only manage one thing at a time, but we can't talk about that. <laughs> and uh, but it's very important what they yes. do, right? He knows how to get things done. And oh, and it's a, as, oh, the president, the president, anyway, the president. Yes, okay, I didn't know. Okay, so, <laughs> but yeah, so he's he's actually focusing on STEM, which stands for. You'll hear it quite often. You'll hear it talked about. So you know we're learning as mm -hmm. well too. It's a, it's an acronym standing for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And they're really wanting to focus to get people in there, but also to get um, get women involved in that industry. It's a higher paying mm -hmm. industry. Uh, there's a movie, I haven't seen the movie, but it's a historical evidentiary movie about uh, the uh, uh, space, uh, going into space yes. and the rockets that is actually yes. was like three or four African American women who were gifted in the area of mathematics that calculated with a pencil and paper, go figure, right? This generation yes. don't know about that. The, 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 how to get the trajectory for uh, the um, rocket to be mm -hmm. able to, to make it back to Earth. It's just a powerful thing. And so they're focusing on this. So our president, and I want to, I I before we, we um, uh, see it, this, I want you to remember this. Remember uh, Galatians 3.28. You can see this right now. This is very important for us to remember as Christians because historically so many folks have oppressed, oppressed women and oppressed other folks and whatever. But as Christians, you know, Jesus, we're told in the Word of God, as Paul's writing in the book of Galatians, who was writing the book of Galatians, that there is neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free, there's neither male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So when, if you're getting a job, she should get a job mm -hmm. too. If you have access as a male to, uh, you know, science and technology and engineering and mathematics, you know, if we're moving in the spirit of Christ, we, we want to make sure everybody has a fair chance and a fair opportunity. As a matter of fact, our president is standing up for women's rights in this area. It's signing an executive order. As a matter of fact, let's go there now, the White House. Thank you all very much. I appreciate your being here. We have a number of bills that we're signing and things that we're doing today. It's a busy day, and then I guess tonight will be a rather busy night. <laughs> we look forward to it. Uh, I want to thank Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy, who's been a tremendous friend to a lot of people. He's done an amazing job. And Kevin, I want to thank you for being here. Very much appreciated. You had so much to do with this. I uh, also want to thank everyone else who's with us today. In fact, I have some names, and I'll read some of them off because not everybody knows everybody. But uh, you have Leader McCarthy, Representative Barbara Comstock, uh, Lamar Smith. Thank you, Lamar, very much. I appreciate it. Joni Ernst, who's been a terrific, terrific senator, very talented woman, and a very good Mr. military President, person. Thank very you. good military person. And Deb Fisher, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have uh, Senator Barrasso and uh, uh, Senator Bozeman. Bozeman. Joni, we said hello. Deb, we said hello. Heidi Heitkamp, thank you, Heidi. Senator Jim Inhofe. Senator Pat Roberts, Senator Dan Sullivan, Representative Bob Gibbs, Bill Schuster, and Representative Lamar Smith. We really appreciate you being here. And of course, we have uh, our new SBA Director, Linda McMahon, and Secretary DeVos. So we have a lot of, we have a lot of great talent. Uh, today, I'm signing two bills that promote women entering and leading the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and math. Currently, only one in four women who gets a STEM degree is working in a STEM job, which is not fair and it's not even smart for the people that aren't taking advantage of it. It's unacceptable that we have so many American women who have these degrees, but yet are not being employed in these fields. So I think that's going to change. It's going to change very rapidly. Protecting women with STEM degrees and all Americans with STEM degrees, very important. But it also means you have to crack down on offshoring, because the offshoring is a, it's a tremendous problem that displaces many of our best American workers. 
and brains, the brain power. So I just want to thank you all for being here. Vice President Pence always felt very, very strongly about this issue and many others, and I appreciate, Mike, I appreciate that very much. And I'm going to sign this right now, and I want to congratulate everybody in the room. And we have to sign it today. I know we have a lot of things coming on later on, but if we don't sign this one and the next one today, we have to start the process all over again, Johnny, right? Yes, yes. I think that's not good. So that's why we're here. Okay, well, thank you very much. And you can... Uh, That's so exciting to see what's taking place. Yes. You know, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It's important because the first thing you think of when you hear STEM, you think of stem cell research. You think Which about is not the same thing. You know, taking the umbilical cords from babies and yeah. taking the cells out. You know, that kind of thing. This is not that. This is about science, technology, education, and mathematics. And, and you're looking at the the contribution women have given you know, for years in our country, and they deserve equal mm -hmm. chances like everybody else. And our president's standing up, it's exciting. Yeah. John, there is not a lonelier place than moving prophetically. Because mm. when you're moving prophetically, prophetic is something that's not yet happening, right. that you're talking about, that nobody understands, and then you have to build this thing called the ark that there hasn't even been rain yet, and you're talking about rain. And it's a very, I mean, think about Noah when he was building this ark that nobody, I mean, it, it, it had not rained at that point. It, no grid. There's no grid for it. And for, I don't know, wow, his, his sermon went on for 100, mm. over 100 years. a long time. 120, 100 years. Somebody says, you know, I've been working so hard. It's like, well, how long have you been working? Oh, you know, you got a little ways to go now, you know. I've been, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. Said, you hadn't even been alive for a long time. Hello. Yeah. And, and so moving prophetically, but the Lord showed us early on, showed us early on that this is the direction things were going, we need to prepare for it, and we've been working nonstop for many years since the Malachi mandate and, laying the, and learning how to move and what God was going to do hmm. in, in an environment that people didn't have, a, a lot of people didn't have a clue that it was going to happen. And, um, didn't have grit for it, didn't, didn't have yeah. faith for it. But the know. grit is being so laid out in a powerful way, and this is not a quality video, but this is, you know, who cares about the quality video? when you're hearing some, some things taking place. And if you had never had a chance to go to a Morning Star in uh, South Carolina. Fort Mills. Fort Mills, South Carolina. It's a very encouraging place. It was the old, what well, was the former uh, PTL club that was ran by Jim Baker. Jim Baker and uh, 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 the Lord touched uh, uh, Rick Joyner's heart and told him to come back and to, to renovate that and not let it go dark, you know, and he did. And he helped even restore Jim Baker uh, to, to part of that. I understand what's going on. It was Heritage on. USA. Man. Heritage, yeah, Heritage USA. And uh, it's exciting, you know, we help each other out like that. Well, this is coming straight from the Herit former Heritage USA, Morningstar Ministries. And they're having a gathering right there, and they're just talking with their phone camera. You know, we're all getting used to this kind of stuff. Uh, but listen to what he says, because it's time for us to activate. We have to begin to activate. We're so used to right now just watching things. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to get involved. As a matter of fact, this is Lance Walnut and Rick Joyner. Take a look. Okay, we are live at the round table, and here is Lance Walnut. We're going to do a co-rant. He's going to rant. He's got his going. I've got mine going. Lance, give us a rant. All right, give this us is a good one. This is now. I'm with Rick Joyner. Just telling all my people right here. We're connecting up. It's like a Vulcan mind meld. My <laughs> people and your people, Rick. Yeah. So here's, here's the thing, man. I'm just like so stoked because Rick gets together these extraordinary people. Rick, I've been, I've been percolating with this idea that we have seen a historic move of God in the nation with the election. And now true to what happens with the church, and Rick, you brought this up about, uh, the, what was this, in Cuba? There was a, what had happened in the play? The church wasn't ready, but... The, but that was uh, in uh, Katrina. Katrina, okay. Yeah. 
And, uh, and, so, and so here there was devastation, but nobody had a plan. Christians didn't necessarily have a plan to help humanitarian, but nobody had a plan to rebuild the city. But who had a plan? The casino owners. <laughs> yeah, and they beat us. They came with a plan. We didn't have one. The whole city now is built according to their, according to their plan. So, here, so here's <clears throat> what's burning in my spirit. We need, and of course, right away, in, in a room like this, Rick, I, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping out of my skin because I'm hearing a lot of people say stuff that on one hand, it's annoyed it. On the other hand, I hear the datedness of how we think mm -hmm. because we all go back to the old paradigm. There's this desperation to do something. First thing is, everybody wants to move in love and be loving, but, I'm, but we're also discussing the fact that love has an edge to it, and sometimes love is controversial. Yeah. And being loving doesn't mean being liked. It might mean being true and having the power to create a controversy for the right reasons. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. So the other thing is everybody wants to get a hold of Trump and talk to Trump. Forget that. That guy's got more great ideas. He's surrounded with more good people. What he needs is an organized echo chamber. The body of Christ in America has got to become as muscular and as coherent in modeling answers to problems as the progressive left is. Don't you think it's, we're crying out right now for organization more than anything? Organization and a clear trumpet call. A clear trumpet call so that the people know why they're mobilizing, what they're to do when they mobilize. We need a plan. We need a plan, and we also need to recognize from campuses to business to race relations, I believe God's raising up oracles. And, Rick, the thing that I'm thinking is that we can catalyze before we leave this roundtable is individuals should be oracles in their sphere. They should know what giant they're after. You know, if you like a good military thing, if you're moving in all directions, you're not moving anywhere. Everyone here should know what sphere they're called to go into and how to articulate in a powerful and compelling way the truth that displaces the lie. Amen. If we can do that and mobilize a new generation of millennials and marketplace people to uh, in, in movement locally and then network them nationally, Trump gets the one thing he doesn't have, an echo chamber. What Kellyanne Conway and Reince Priebus are saying behind the scenes is we need to see your support. We got in here. The left makes it sound like nobody voted for us. You guys have got to go from being polite conservatives that are disengaged to mobilized conservatives with activist views that you believe in. Powerful word. Absolute powerful word. So you're looking at it's just this is what we've been working on for quite some time. And it's, it's VFN Kingdom Business. When you hear us call, talk about VFNKB.org, we're talking about, you know, the Lord told us your kingdom come. Hmm. That's what we're called to do. You know, we're called to, 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 to pray and believe and walk out his kingdom being manifest here on the earth, manifested here on the earth. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As a matter of fact, you're probably looking at right now, you know, the seven spheres. We, we talk about them all the time. You have, you know, the, uh, the, the church or religious mountain. You have the family mountain, the education mountain, the business, arts, entertainment, government, media. And uh, I think that's all of them. It's right? all of them. Yeah, every one of them. And it's like education. Education. And we're focused on those things. You know, it's so exciting is what, you know, what Lance Walnut's talking about is that what, what God has had us put together, this is what we need to do. We're asking you to say, listen, it's time to join. It's yes. time to be a part of, of what's going on. It, it, God has laid it out. He's shown us how it's going to happen. We're going to work together. We have a whole, it's called the glory zone on the Gulf Coast, but all over, you know, all the way, we give a big shout out to, to uh, Missouri and all of our... Mm all of our uh, friends and listeners in Missouri and South Florida and all over the world, actually. But it's time you can join because we have everything available for you at vfnkb.org. And you become a VFN Kingdom Business Partner by, by partnering for $25 or more a month. And it's time to really think about, you know, what am I going to do? And you can begin to invest. Think about this. You can travel all the way to Tasmania, Australia, and you can talk to, big shout out to Tasmania, Australia, or which is thousands of dollars and lots of learning and things. Sure. Or you can say, you know what? I'm going to significantly invest $100 a month in VFN TV so that I can get there through VFN TV because we connect to Absolutely. Tasmania, Australia. Absolutely. And, 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 and it's not this crazy stuff's going on. It's about what, you know, uh, Lance Walner is talking about, you know, being activated. When we're hearing the right thing come out of Washington, D.C., we don't sit silently and say nothing. We just say, amen. And, and then we, we say, have such a short, limited amount of time to do Maybe two years. It. it could be two years. That's it. You know, it depends on how the elections go in two years. Uh, but we've got to begin to pray. It's time. And so it's time. Think about this. 
I believe that God has a plan for you, a plan for your business. If you're an educator, God has a plan for you. I believe that God can speak prophetically, prophetically over your business. Mm. You can buy every billboard and sign and try to advertise your business, or God could tell you prophetically, put the billboard on this road for this time because I have a man that's going to come by there and he's going to want your product. God's into you. God is into business. He's the one that created these seven spheres, but we've give, given those over to the adversary. And so what we got to do is begin to go back and say, you know what? I want to be able to take these mountains for God. I want to have impact for God. And really it's, it's about having, uh, being close to those who are in leadership over that, um, over that mountain. You don't have to be at the top of the mountain. Sure. You can be Daniel at the ear of the king and God gives you the ability to interpret a dream. Joseph. You share a word, you know, in a boardroom and the whole company shifts. And there's, you can find out more about that. It's VFN Kingdom Business. You know, and our vision statement, of course, is unity in the essentials, liberty in the non-essentials, and in all things, love. It's vfnkb.org. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.